Today we're going to see if we can plot twist this whole game of homebrew, and we're talking about something so crazy you could talk your wife back into falling in love with you all over again, and baby, it is cold outside, and I'm not used to this. We used to brew a ton of beers back in San Diego, all the beer styles you could ever imagine, but it's zero degrees right now. But thank God there's electric systems in today's homebrewing world, and more specifically, I'll be using the 120 volt system from Clawhammer Supply. And before we talk about reinventing the wheel, let's talk about what beer beer style we're going after today. And you know what? It's probably my favorite beer style of all time, the dark lager. See, dark stuff is chill, like dark meat, dark link, the dark side of the moon, the dark night, and even dark beers. And I'm not sure why dark lagers aren't more popular in the US. They are delicious, easy to drink, and perfect no matter what time of the year it is. So today we're gonna make one, but we're gonna make one like never before. We're gonna make it without chilling our wart. See, back in the day, there was all this fear on cooling your wart down as fast as you could to avoid contamination. And I took a lot of pride of getting my five and 10 gallon batches down to pitching temperatures in about 20 minutes. But then I started hearing about people from Australia and other places that were dealing with droughts. And at first I thought it was risky business and I didn't mind cooling my wart down, but it did take more preparation and time. Worrying about having ice, freezing ice, waiting for ice to freeze, running two hoses through your house, leaking water everywhere, having to buy another chiller or two, but most importantly, it wasted an insane amount of water. So today we're gonna focus on saving the whales at the expense that this might not work at all. And this beer could potentially turn out insanely infected. So stick around to the end of this video. Will this be a delicious batch of beer or is this another batch and I'm gonna have to throw out? Now, brewing great beer comes from passion, and these days my home brewing morale isn't so high. Last batch of beer, it worked, but would I sell it? No. That batch really wasn't about honing in an A-plus recipe, but more dialing in my new system, but the batch before that, I had to throw out. So it's back to the drawing board, and to be honest, I just sit on my couch all day waiting to be inspired. If nothing inspires me, then I'll just sit there all day and do nothing. But thankfully, my biggest source of inspiration is other brew tubers. See what people are Brewing, checking out new systems, side by sides comparisons with their clones. So, shout out to Elementary, and that's enough for me. It's time to rock and roll. And to further boost my morale, I finally tracked down a decent homebrewing store here in Knoxville. And if they have liquid yeast, they're a great homebrewing store, in my opinion. And it's always great to support the mom and pops. But furthermore, they are a mom and pop family, which is great because you're going to get much better customer service and product knowledge than just some dude going through the motions. I'm going with Urkel Yeast today, solely based on I've never used it before and I was a fan of the show growing up, but it's $14. I'm pretty sure that's the most I've ever paid for yeast. One thing your homebrew store probably isn't going to have though is distilled water. And you know what? I'm only brewing with distilled water from here on out, but it's getting tougher and tougher to find. But this is an advantage homebrewers have over commercial brewers. Since this is a lager, I'm going to take it easy on beer salt since we're going for a soft profile. By the way, the recipe is in the description of this video, and if you want to change up the grain bill and add more roasted grain, then I might consider some carbonate. There's brewers who spend more money and time on pulley systems for brewing a bag, but since it's a five gallon batch, I'm just going to go with this two step ladder, I think. I think I'm good to go. Now this is the first time I've really brewed on a complete claw hammer system and I love it. 152 degrees mash with about a 45 minute sparge. I typically don't sparge for this long, but I came up short on sugar on my last batch. So today we're just rinsing for longer. And you know what? This feels good. No problem so far. Brew day is going incredibly smooth. All my lights and cameras are doing the tricks. I used to have a Canon camera that would randomly shut off back in the day. That was a nightmare. Time to bring to boil, and this is always very therapeutic for me. Just a Braj and his boil letting his mind wander. Like, what was the deal with the maid from the Brady Bunch? Did she die a virgin? Was she a lesbian? Or who would win in a Merc Fest? Steven Spielberg's Jaws? or the alligator from Lake Placid. Can you die from being sexually frustrated? And am I the only one who thinks Honey Boo Boo's mom is a MILF? Ja only knows. But after a 30 minute boil, I'm gonna throw in an ounce of sauce, Jimmy rigs some MacGruber thing to make sure it's airtight, or at least somewhat airtight, and use foil on this. This wart is around 200 degrees Fahrenheit, so don't use plastic or glad wrap or anything. And we're gonna put it outside and pray that it doesn't freeze. That's it, day one of my no chill brew day. So far, 
so good. All right, morning time, day two, and my wart didn't even come close to freezing. Mother Nature got it down to about 50 degrees. Hit my yeast with star sand, hit the lid again, pitched the yeast, but I got plot twisted. I looked at the yeast package and noticed it expired in August of 2022. That's a really long time to be expired, but there's two billion yeast cells in here, so I'm just gonna stay the course and pray to the beer gods. I'm gonna do a split batch just for shits and giggles. One corny fermenter under pressure and the other just with a blow off tube. And I'm gonna go back and forth with this hose to make sure that the yeast gets evenly distributed. And the OG gravity is sitting at a perfect 1046. But I did wait 24 hours and zero fermentation in either tank, not good. So I filled up the cornies in my brew kettle with hot water hoping to kickstart the yeast and I waited another day and nothing. 48 hours of zero fermentation in either keg. Now we're going back to Old Faithful. Here's a serious tip. Always have dry yeast on standby. It will always outlive liquid yeast. And you can buy this stuff on Amazon. And if you click the link in the description of my video, I'll get a little piece of that sale. And 100% of all proceeds will go to my charity. It's a charity that supports the families who survived Y2K. And boom, next day. The corny under pressure was at 15 PSI. But the corny not under pressure, still zero activity. But I've been here before. I call it the Houdini when beer ferments but doesn't show any airlock activity. I still let both of these sit for a week. I checked the beer that didn't show any signs of fermentation and it tasted great. 10-10 final gravity. And I found the problem. The corny keg opening was warped and it wasn't airtight. My bad for not checking a used keg to see if it was airtight beforehand. You can kind of see it, but you can definitely feel it. Like a bomb went off in there. Okay, easy fix. Just rack it into another corny keg, but my dumbass forgot to dump a gallon and a half of star sand solution out of the new keg. Dumbass city, goodbye beer, saying goodbye is hard. But we can still focus on the beers that are here. And my God, that's good. I needed that. I needed this. This is definitely in my top 10. Mm. Love the claw hammer system. It was great. I think I'm only going to brew this style of beer from here on out. I'm not kidding. I can always drink dark lagers. And this definitely gave me the itch to brew again. Shout out to whoever started using distilled water. I think that was the deal breaker between this one and the last. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, shout out to Clawhammer. Shout out to anybody who made it this far in this video. We'll see you on the stream tonight. Cheers to eating good. Cheers to drinking good.